You're adults, you're living, you're mature, and you are already successful because you're sitting here today. When I gave my first commencement address this past May in Little Rock, Arkansas, I spoke to a traditional college of 21-year-olds graduating with their four-year degree. And I talked to them about the two lives, the two lives that each of us gets. I told them, your first life is the life that you learn with. Your second life is the life that you live with after that. For many of you here, you're living the second life. The first life has passed you by. And as I thought about what I might impart to you today, I realized that the most urgent issue facing all of us in this room right now is how do we exist, work together, and live together in the present climate of national uncertainty and division, of political rancor, racial unrest, and the impact of the Me Too movement that has rocked industry and corporate America. All of it, all of it has changed how we engage one another and how we must live in the world together. Folks, we're operating in a different America. Demographic shifts are causing discomfort and disease. Not disease, I said dis-ease. Disruption even. America will be a majority minority nation in 2025. Let me say that again. America will be a majority minority nation in 2025. We must then find a way to exist with one another, to help one another, to lift one another up as we ourselves climb. This goes beyond race or gender or religion or background. Let me be clear. I do not care what party you are in or about your politics, whether you are liberal or conservative. We are Americans first. What I care about is preparing you to be equipped, engaged, and informed citizens of the greatest republic ever on the face of the earth. It is here that I want to start my remarks with a premise. America is the story of us, of all of us. It is the story of dreamers, of risk takers and explorers, of natives and farmers and merchants and slaves, of immigrants. We all built America together. America is a story indeed. It is a promise. It is decision that changed the course of mankind. Some of us are conservative. Some of us are liberal. Some of us sit in the middle. And I need you to know that wherever you sit today, it's okay. What matters is that we love this great nation, that we want to pursue the American dream, that we want to leave the next generation better than we find ourselves. America is a powerful story of us, the collective us. Our motto in 1780, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. And if you are sitting here today and you are not yet a citizen and you want to be, this message is for you too, because one day you can take the oath of citizenship and become an American. And I want to charge you all today to go out into the world and live a life that reflects the values of unity, inclusion, respect, optimism, and hard work that truly makes America great. We are a nation of diverse people. There is no other place like us on earth. Oh, we have our problems, our faults, our issues. But we are always at our best graduates when we operate as one America. It is our differences that make us great. It is our diversity of race, religion, creed, and background that 
pushes us to expand our greatness. The reason that America has endured for 242 years is because we are always in the process of perfecting our union. We never quit. We never give up on each other, although at times we may strongly disagree. And graduates and everybody in here, hear me on this. Disagreement is a good thing. Not destruction of your opponent, as we so often see now on social media and otherwise. That is not the best of who we are as Americans. Disagreement is what this country was founded on. We must learn to disagree with each other while defending each other's rights to free speech, free assembly, and freedom to worship as we choose. Every human being, every human being who is born is born with those unalienable rights that Thomas Jefferson wrote about in the Declaration of Independence in 1776. Here's what he said. He said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Everybody in here has those God-given rights, those God-granted rights that no man can take from you or put asunder. So how then do we live together and work together when we're changing? This isn't the America that was founded in 1776, yet those words still hold true. Let me put it to you like this. If we're going to make this work, if we're going to continue to be America the Great, we're going to have to do some things. I'm going to quote a great North Carolinian, Dr. Maya Angelou, also an AKA woman. And my favorite quote by her goes like this. She said, people will forget what you said and people will forget what you do, but people will never forget how you made them feel. In that spirit, I challenge you today to focus most of all as you go forth, as you go out, as you continue. I challenge you today to focus on how you treat others. And I offer you these nuggets of life wisdom that I've learned over the past 25 years now as a professional attorney turned author, national journalist, global speaker, trainer, and most importantly though, as a human being, they apply to you whether you're white or black, yellow or red, male or female, Christian or Muslim. And I hope you will keep these nuggets I'm going to give you in your heart and put them into practice both in the workplace and in your day-to-day -day lives. So get ready, I'm gonna hit you with them quick. And use Strayer Grad 2018 as your hashtag. I want you to tweet them. I want you to post them. I want you to share the wisdom. All right, you ready? All right, number one. The number one most important thing I want to tell you today is to know your value. You better know your value or they never will. You have to know your worth. Everything that will happen in your life from this moment forward and past, it happened either because you knew your value or you didn't. So I want you today to teach people how to treat you by how you treat yourself. Know your value, that's number one. Number two, number two, and this is never popular, but this is real. Be accountable. You are responsible for your choices. You and you alone are responsible for your choices. I want you to practice what I call the three C's. Consistency, be consistent. Keep your word, do what you say you're gonna do. Men, this one really applies to you. Number two, character. Reputation is situational. You ask 10 people what they think about Sophia Nelson, seven are gonna say nice things. The other three, not so much. So focus on your character because your character is who you are. 
Your character is how you show up every day in the world. It's the core of your code of your being, and that's not situational. Capacity. Capacity. This is a big one. You do know that no is a complete sentence, right? You have to learn to tell people, no, I can't. I have other things I need to do. I'd love to help you now, but I can't. Know when you've hit your limit. Ladies, this one's for you, particularly to my African-American sisters. We don't know how to say enough. Learn when to say enough. Number three, and this one comes from my South Carolina grandmama who had a sixth grade education. I love that woman. She didn't have formal degrees like I did, but she was smarter than I'll ever be. And she said to me, baby, never cut what you can untie. Now what that means is, another way of saying that is, don't burn bridges unnecessarily. But this one applies to this generation, and for those of you watching at home, hear me on this. We're too quick to cut people now, good people. People have been by us, we wanna cut our marriages, we wanna cut our family, we wanna cut everything, and we wanna do easy. That's not life. There are times when you need to just step back and catch your breath. It'll be all right. Do not cut what you can untie. Number four. This one applies really to the workplace, but it'll help you in your life. I call it the three Fs, fair, focused, flexible. It's emotional intelligence. It's how you assess other people and how you assess yourself. And if you wanna do well in business, if you wanna do well in your relationships, be fair, be flexible. It ain't all about you. It don't always have to be your way. Be flexible. And my favorite word, and my staff hates this word because I say it at least 12 times a day, focus. Stop being distracted by mess. Stop being distracted by all this noise out here. Get focused. Number five. This is another one that is a nanaism, as I like to call it. Lift others as you climb. Now listen, I want to talk to the women for a second because the men are better at this one than we are. The old boys network is the old boys network for a reason. It's been around for a long time. They have practice. But men roll. They let stuff roll. They, they don't trip like we do. They, they, you know, they might punch it out, argue it out. They'll go sit down and have a drink and they're good. That's not so much what we women like to do. This notion of lifting as you climb is critical because you owe it. Because somebody lifted you to sit in that seat today. Somebody helped you up and somebody pulled you up or you wouldn't be here. So how dare you go out into corporate America and become a vice president or in academia and push the other women down or push others down because you wanna be the queen bee. That's not how this works. You gotta lift other people as you yourself climb. It's called good karma. It's how you go further. If you help others, God will give you more. Lift others as you climb. Just a couple more and we're done. Number six, and some of you, you know this one already, be resilient. If you hear nothing else I tell you today, <clears throat> this is the second life, this is the second act. We're not children anymore. You are going to have to get back up again and again and again, that's life. Don't you ever quit. Don't you ever give up and don't you ever get in, give in. You must be resilient. You gotta keep bouncing back. Life's gonna throw you curveballs. People are gonna get sick. Bankruptcies happen. Marriages end. People die. Life can be hard. It can also be amazing. So learn to be resilient. Keep getting back up no matter what life throws at you. Now number seven is big. Two more and we're done. In the age of texting and social media and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, first of all, can I tell you none of that's real? If you didn't know. Particularly Instagram. 
All those happy people you see with all those pictures smiling, that's not real. I promise you it's not. Number seven, have courageous conversations. Now for you young folks out there, I have some bad news for you. Texting ain't talking. A conversation is an audible, two people speaking on the phone in person over coffee. It ain't even a letter. It's called a conversation. And we better get back. I talked about America and I talked about the greatness of who we are. You know why we're all angry and fighting? Have you gone on your Twitter feed lately? I'm not gonna call anybody out, but y'all know who I'm thinking about. <laughs> Courageous conversations. Talk, don't text. Talk before you walk. If you are breaking up with somebody on a text, <laughs> if you send in a note to your wife saying you want a divorce on a text, this is stuff, by the way, that I know has happened in real life. Folks, conversation. We have to get back to the power of being human beings again, of talking to each other, of giving each other grace and mercy and goodness and second chances. Have courageous conversations. And finally, the coup de grace. This one came directly from my grandmother. She said, baby, she likes to say baby. You all got grandmothers, southern grandmothers, you know what that's like. Said, baby, you better know your front row. My, my, know your row. Let me translate what she said. The people in your circle, the people in your life, you better make sure when you're rowing that boat that somebody else isn't in there drilling a hole in it. You better know who's around you. You better have some people in your life who speak life to you. You know, there's a great, great, great story in the Bible. Can I talk about the Bible for a moment? It's one of my favorite scriptures. Mark chapter 2. Now I'm off script at this moment. Mark chapter 2. There's a story about a man. He was paralyzed his whole life, and he laid on a mat. And he had these friends. Now listen to this. He had some friends, and the friends heard that Jesus was coming to town. And they said, you know what, man? Why don't we take our boy up here and see if this Jesus guy can help him out? So these friends pick up their friend's mat. There's four of them, and they carry him. Now, the Bible tells us that they went to Peter's house. Everybody was at Peter's house. I love Peter. And everybody's at Peter's house, and when they get there, they can't get in the door because everybody else wants to get healed too. Now, some of your friends and some of my former friends would have dropped us on the mat and left us there and been like, I tried to help you, but that ain't what happened. What they did was they walked up the hill, they cut a hole through the roof, and they lowered their friend down. What am I saying to you better get you some Mark chapter 2 friends? You better get you some friends that will pick you up. You better get some people in your row. You better get some people in your row that are going to look out for you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of my address. God bless you, congratulations, and thank you for having me. Wow. Like for real? So um, there's, I had the good fortune before this to meet someone in the room where Sophia was. And I'd like to f ask Sophia's mom, Sandy, somewhere to stand. Where are you, Sandy? I mean, these are, the, these are the kind of moments that parents dream about. You, that's your daughter right there. That, thank you, amazing. And I was thinking, actually, while Sophia was talking, we started this thinking about a village and the message about 
who cares what your party is, who cares where you grew up, what your religious affiliation is. We have the responsibility to take care of each other. So this is your new Strayer Village because you're all walking away as graduates today. And Lori can get you into this alumni group. But we have a responsibility to take it outside the room. So I am blown away. Thank you so much, Sophia. And you all know what's coming now, right? I mean, it is the... Uh